There are two possible arguments accepted by ref attribute. Ref object, which is a value returned by use ref hook, and ref callback, which is a function that is being called with DOM node when it's inserted into the DOM tree. If we assign DOM node to the ref in our callback, those two examples become basically equivalent, so ref object can be treated as a syntactic sugar over ref callbacks. And you can probably agree that using it seems to be an easier and more convenient option. In day-to-day -day practice, I see that the majority of code dealing with explicit DOM manipulation uses the ref object attachment pattern. Then it's usually combined with use effect or sometimes use layout effect to trigger some DOM method on the DOM node that we have obtained. Ref callbacks, on the other hand, are perceived as an exotic feature of React, rather rarely used and often completely forgotten. I think this should be quite the opposite, and by developing a proper mental model of callback refs, you will understand that we should use them in majority of cases, and it will make our React code more robust. Let's start with some classic DOM manipulation example. It's often a case that having some form, we want to focus an input when our page loads for the first time. Classic solution is to create ref object with use ref, attach it to ref attribute, then import use effect and call focus method on ref's current property adding empty dependency array to trigger it only once when the component mounts. But as soon as we add some complexity, like conditionally rendering input based on isVisible flag, this code breaks. When I load the page, isVisible is initially false. So when useEffect runs, the input element was not yet rendered, and the ref object is undefined. Calling focus on undefined results in error. We can obviously add optional chaining. The error will go away. But focus will simply not be called anymore. And when we change is visible to true by clicking on a button, our effect was already fired, so it will not fire again because of the empty dependency array. You may think of adding ref.current as a dependency to use effect. After all, we want to trigger effect when our ref changes. But the important property of refs is that changing their values is not triggering a new render. So even we know that the value inside our dependencies array has changed, component was not re-rendered, so use effect will not be called after our input mounts. Other idea would be to try to bind effect with is visible state, so it will be triggered when is visible turns true. But now we have to maintain this indirect connection between DOM node being mounted, our effect, and the state that is the link between them. If any time in the future state name changes, or this conditional becomes more complex using more than one state variable, we have to remember about it and update our list of dependencies in the use effect. Possibly also changing the conditional that guards the focus method call. That definitely adds to complexity. And we also have to remember that we are still triggering our code unnecessarily when the component mounts. All those problems stems from the fact that we are using wrong tool to trigger our DOM logic. Use effect is inherently bounded to the component's lifecycle, not underlying DOM node's lifecycle. And those life cycles are not the same, because components usually live longer than DOM nodes. That's why using use effect for DOM manipulation feels like swimming against the tide. The correct mental model is to differentiate those two separate cases. When we want to do something when component mounts, when it unmounts, and when some state or props related to this component changes, then we should rely on use effect, which helps us to synchronize our logic with the component's lifecycle. On the other hand, if we need to know when the DOM node was mounted, or when it was removed from the DOM tree, then we should use ref callbacks, which helps us to synchronize our DOM logic with the DOM node's lifecycle. Converting our example to ref callback, we are able to get rid of unnecessary use ref and use effect. We don't have to worry about synchronization with some state that can change in the future. And we don't have to worry about component's lifecycle, like running our effect initially when component mounts. Lastly, our logic will not run twice in the strict mode, which is the case with use effect since React version 18. But our code has one tiny flaw that we have to address. In React docs, it is mentioned that there is one caveat with callback refs. I will actually quote old docs because I think the wording here is better. So if the ref callback is defined as an inline function, it will get called twice during updates. First with null and then again with the DOM element. This is because a new instance of the function is created with each render. So React needs to clear the old ref and set up the new one. You can avoid this by defining the ref callback as a bound method on the class but note that it shouldn't matter in most cases. Well, in our case it matters because we don't want to focus our input element every time React component renders. First, let's observe the problem in our example by adding count state and then incrementing it on a button click. Each time the component re-renders, our ref callback is called twice, 
first with null, then with the DOM node. And each time it is calling focus method. The one solution provided in the docs is to define a method that is bounded to a class. It obviously will work only for class components, but let's try. Attaching bounded ref callback guarantees referential stability of this function. It's always the same on each render, so it will not be called all the time. As you can see, hitting increment button no longer triggers ref callbacks. There are four ways you can do the same in function components. First, freeze the function's reference using use callback hook. This is actually used in some examples in React Docs. But it's worth noting though that both use callback and use memo are mainly a performance optimization utilities, and they are not designed to guarantee referential stability. So in some rare cases, our ref callbacks might be regenerated, because React's engine may decide to purge cache of use callback instances, and then they will be randomly triggered, causing our logic to be executed when we didn't expect it. That's why there is a separate use memo one package on npm with use callback one function that is written precisely as a semantic guarantee. But to use it, you have to add third-party library to your code, which might not be ideal. Third option is to store your callback in ref, setting it as an initial argument for use ref hook, so it's only defined once. But looking at this ref, you might actually come up with fourth and the best option: move this function out of the component altogether to the module scope. So you don't need any React API and you have this function's reference stable. There are some cases when we still might want to combine callback ref with use ref hook. Let's say we want to add event listener to some DOM node. It might be a good idea to clean it up when this DOM node will be removed from the DOM tree. When it happens, we get a call with null value. That way we can recognize our node is being unmounted. But then inside the callback, we no longer have the access to the old DOM node. So we can't call remove event listener on it. We have to prepare first, declare ref object with use ref hook, set it up when the DOM node mounts, then, when the node is null, we can call remove event listener on the preserved ref. In the future, cleaning up will be even easier, as there is an RFC in React that was already merged and introduces cleanup functions to ref callbacks. So very similarly to use effect, we will be able to return function from ref callback that will be called when the DOM node unmounts. And because our cleanup declaration will live in the same scope as the initial ref callback, called with the DOM node as the argument, our cleanup function will be able to use closure over this DOM node. So we won't have to persist it separately using use ref. And I found a suggestion that it will be published with the next version of React. So fingers crossed. All in all, I hope I have convinced you it's better to use callback refs for DOM manipulation logic because it's closely binded to the DOM nodes lifecycle. If you want me to make more videos like this, hit subscribe, it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.